Tim, I think, characterizes exactly correctly the kind the, the way this is laid out in the context of, say, von Neumann's book uh, on mathematical foundations of quantum mechanics. Um, what you have there is a situation where von Neumann says, well, look, there's this, you know, there's this Frankenstein monster, as Tim very nicely put it, um, of a theory, okay? There's a certain way that the quantum state behaves when it's not being measured, and there's another way that it behaves when it is being measured, and von Neumann, just as Tim says, calls one of them process one and one of them process two. And when you put it that way, it sounds like the problem that you're trying to solve is a problem of trying to precisely delineate the location of this boundary between those circumstances in which um, the Schrodinger equation holds sway and those circumstances in which the collapse postulate holds sway, those circumstances in which process one holds sway, and those circumstances in which process two holds sway. And to the extent that you're treating the situation that way, as von Neumann does, you're in some sense trying to be, trying to solve what Tim calls the reality problem. Okay, trying to answer questions, however unwieldy they are, about what's actually going on. Okay, and you might conclude after a little worrying about this that this is the wrong way to approach it, and you ought to take a different approach, like Tim says, characteristic of something like the GRW theory, where you don't tie this second process to the occurrence of a measurement because you realize you just don't know how to set in a reasonable way the location of this boundary between those circumstances in which the collapse postulate applies and those circumstances in which the Schrodinger equation applies. And you you might be on the road to all, to the development of all kinds of theories. 